Hey guys, Ivan here, and first off we're gonna start with Cedric McMillan physique update. And let me tell you, he looks awesome in this one. This was a guest posing, but he originally was supposed to compete at Arnold Classic Ohio, though because of his uh, injuries he decided to actually skip that one. You guys do know that Cedric has Arnold Classic title under his belt, and he is a pro show winner, he's one of the top pros, he was at least. So after the Arnold Classic and the Mr. Olympia, he decided to do the Legion Sports Festival. You guys remember that Sean Clarida actually won that show, Regan Grimes was second and third was Sergio Oliva, but where was Cedric at that show? Well, he was supposed to be top 10 after the pre-judging, but he posted this story, uh, he didn't like his look and he didn't even show up at the finals. Is it because he was not feeling well, as some said, or because he just felt disappointed? He didn't think he he's supposed to be on that show because he can't even be in top 3 or top 6? I don't know, we don't know, but he didn't show up. And ever since, we didn't really hear much from him. Now, there is this guest posing, and he looks phenomenal right here, honestly. I mean, he looks big, bigger than before. He looks pretty... I mean, he looks in, in condition. I mean, he was prepping for the Arnold and then for the Legion, and maybe he just stayed in shape. Maybe he plans on competing. I think there are two more shows left in this season. Anyways, he looks awesome here. And there is another photo that he posted as well from the backstage, probably. And here you can kind of grasp what his body fat percent is looking like. I don't know, he doesn't look as lean in this photo as he does on stage. Maybe it's just the lighting difference, I don't know. But his stomach looks a little bit watery. He does look pretty smooth. So, I don't know, I mean, uh, he does have the size back. But I think he kind of lost the shape, the freshness that he once had when he was a younger bodybuilder. I think he's kind of fading, you know, at this point. I don't think we're gonna see great Sergio McMillan that we saw one day. And um, I don't think he's gonna fulfill his maximum potential. Everybody was saying he's gonna be the future Mr. Olympia. And he could have been, but apparently, you know, he never, he, he never really got to that point. He never got shredded enough, I believe that was the issue. But uh, right now, this is him. After all the injuries and everything, he is back uh, as far as muscle mass. He's kind of back as far as shape, conditioning. Mm, I don't think I saw that. And I don't think he has the freshness to his look anymore. But I don't know. Let's hope for the best. Maybe he brings something new. Maybe he brings some crazy level of conditioning. And with all this mass and this, this genetics, this shape, this structure, the symmetry, it might very well be enough for him to win more pro shows or place very, very high at the Mr. Olympia. I don't think that's impossible. Uh, I think it's all about him and his mindset and what he decides to do. So, guys, tell me what do you think. What do you think is the future of Cedric McMillan? All right, next up, we have Logan Franklin, who just won a pro show, which qualified him for the Mr. Olympia. Uh, it was Sean Ray's Hawaii Classic, and uh, his competition was... Well, I mean, it wasn't exactly Mr. Olympia type of standard, not even New York Pro or Tampa or whatever shows he won before. Um, it, I mean, I, I these guys are great, I mean, especially the one next to Rogan on the left, but that's not like super high caliber of, of bodybuilders. Honestly, I don't know any of these guys, I don't know their names, maybe you guys do, I personally do not. And so, yeah, it was an easy qualification for Logan. I mean, these guys are great, again, but Logan is a different level of bodybuilder. You know, he's, a, he's an Olympian. He's one of the top guys, one of the best in the world. And this show, I don't know. I mean, it wasn't exactly a hard show to, to win. Maybe the reason why a lot of bodybuilders, a lot of great top classic physique guys didn't show up here is because of what went down with Sean Ray, you know, talking uh, all the stuff about Sean Road and all that drama. Maybe that's the reason, I don't know. I mean, this is not exactly a super high level show, that's true. But it's, a, it's an opportunity to compete and to visit Hawaii, so I, I think bodybuilders are actually thinking about that so uh, nobody really showed up here i mean uh, logan won this easily i don't think there's anything wrong with doing these low level shows as long as they're pro shows who cares i mean he gets qualification he gets another win under his belt maybe some money prize i don't know how much and he also visited hawaii so you know it's a great thing for him for sure uh, easy qualification we'll see him next year at the mr olympia how did he look here i mean he did look pretty good the lighting wasn't exactly super flattering, not really uh, exposing the conditioning properly. Uh, it's a little bit, it looks like a daily light a little bit, so I mean, I don't, I don't like this lighting. But even though the lighting is bad, you can see that he brought pretty good shape. 
he's not like uh, shredded to the bone, nothing like that, but you know, good conditioning. So he won fair and square, he deserved that Mr. Olympic qualification. Alright, next up is Brett Wilkin. So this guy, he was second at the Chicago Pro right after Hunter Labrada, he was able to beat a lot of great guys including Rolly Winkler and some other top pros, it was a tough show, you know, Chicago Pro, that's nothing like Hawaii Classic or whatever, it's a good show, it's a, it's a tough show, and nobody really saw this guy, you know, really cracking the top two at that time, so that's the show he made his name with. After that, you know, now you know who, who Brad Wilkin is. So he's on a podcast with Fuad Abiyad and the crew, and you can hear him talk about how he perceives bodybuilding, and it's very motivating. So this guy is a really hard worker. Uh, he was trying lately to get to that 280-pound mark. So he talked about that in a podcast, and apparently he did it. He says 280, uh, morning weight. And he talks about how much he needs to eat, you know, to gain this, this, all this mass. And apparently it's working for him. I mean, he looks great. He looks lean. He looks, uh, he looks really big. And he is a big bodybuilder. So again, he was second at the Chicago. That was the last show he did last year. I think that was a smart decision. He won. Uh, he actually didn't win, but he was second. And then I hope next year he's going to win. A, win a, he can win a pro show. Come on. If he, if he was second at the Chicago, he can win a pro show easily. I think he's now... Now, uh, better bodybuilder than Cedric, as for their current placements, uh, as their, uh, you know, uh, the way they look, basically. So, Brett is one of the top bodybuilders, and if he, if he makes improvements, and I'm sure he will, if he grows a little bit more, and conditioning, he just repeats the same conditioning like last year. He was peeled, he was great. If he actually, if he repeats the conditioning and comes a little bit bigger, this guy can be a top six Olympian. I can see that. Why not? And he's also very, very aesthetic. I love that about his physique. He is very aesthetic. And that's very rare these days. A mass monster with such an aesthetic physique, like with his abs that look perfect, with small waist, big arms, but complete back as well, great legs, overall very, very complete physique, wide shoulders, small waist, great, great abdominals, everything is just spot on. It is gonna be just like, you know, fine polishment at this point, like gaining a little bit of muscle, a little bit of tissue here and there, you know, getting a little bit deeper serration, separation, uh, getting that maturity, getting more condition if possible, but basically that's it, I mean, it's just gonna be fine polishing at this point, and uh, yeah, I can easily see this guy cracking the top six, top five at the Mr. Olympia, I mean, it's not easily, nothing is easy these days against guys like uh, Nick Walker, uh, Hunter Labrada, you know, Hadi Chupan, Brandon Curry and Big Grammy, it's not easy to be right after those guys in top six, so, you know, it's not easy, but it's, it's possible because he has all the tools, I don't really see why he wouldn't be able to be one of the top pros, what do you guys think, is there such a big potential with this guy or am I exaggerating? Alright, so we have another update of another top bodybuilder who won a pro show as well. Obviously, it's Regan Grimes. This guy is talked about as the future Mr. Olympia, big, big potential. He won a pro show and uh, not, not long after he competed, he's already at 276, almost 280, like Brett Wilkin. But Regan is a little bit taller. Anyways, Regan, he looks huge right now. Now, he needs to make some improvements, like his legs could be bigger, rounder, fuller, that's something that Brad doesn't really have to do, Riga needs to change his physique a little bit, and, you know, most importantly, he needs to bring conditioning, he needs to be consistent with it. Finally, when he started working with Milos, that's when he actually, you know, brought some good level of conditioning on the stage, so now he knows how, now he knows what it really means to, to, to actually get shredded, and hopefully he will bring it again and again and again. And hopefully he will make those improvements. Like the legs. I mean, legs are big. He has big legs, don't get me wrong. But uh, there are some parts of it missing. And it would make the, his legs look more complete and bigger and fuller when he's standing next to the other guys. And also, like, the conditioning, the maturity, same stuff. Because he's a younger guy. He's, like, 20, I think, 28 or 20, something like that. 28, 29 right now. So he has a lot of time to make improvements. Now he's working with Milos Charchev. And guys, I just saw that Fuad Abiyad posted a podcast with Milos, so I didn't, I didn't watch it yet. Maybe it's going to reveal some facts. If you guys want, you can go ahead and watch. Maybe he will talk about Regan. I hope so. I'm really excited about that podcast. But apparently, you know, you guys know that Milos is all about insulin use. And if uh, Regan and him uh, start working in the offseason, you guys know that Regan is going to get like 350 <laughs> in the offseason. I mean, he's shortest guys, uh, like guys like Jordan Peters, who is 5'6", got up to over 300 pounds. And Milos, was keep, Milos just wanted to keep pushing him even more and more. And Regan is a tall guy, so I can, I can see him being 350 in the offseason. 
and that's gonna be that's gonna mean a lot more muscle, a lot more tissue. Hopefully, it's not gonna affect his conditioning and the depth of the separation. I don't know how much insulin has an effect on that. A lot of people talked uh, about Regan not having separations because, potentially, because of that, you know, because of insulin use. Maybe, some, some would say, maybe it's training, maybe it's genetics, maybe it's just, just him not being lean enough, but some people thought it might be insulin. Now, working with Milos, you guys know it, he will be using a lot of that stuff, and I don't know how will it affect his physique. Maybe just adding more size is gonna be a great thing for him, maybe that's gonna make him a better bodybuilder. I don't know, but I'm curious, I'm very excited to see what progress these two guys together will make. Anyways guys, that's gonna do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please like it. For more videos like this, subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much guys for watching. All the best and bye-bye.